Hi, I'm Monica Melfast for FinTech TV, and I'm here with Lantern Pharma CEO Pana Sharma. So nice to have you here at the New York Stock Exchange, yep. an exciting time for your company. We're going to talk a bit about your company, how it started, and how it's going. Uh, tell me a little bit about what your company actually does. Yeah, thanks, Monica. It's great to be here. Um, Lantern Pharma, we're focused on using AI for good. We use large-scale AI platforms to develop new drugs, reposition drugs, find out how they work or how they don't work, find out what cancers to focus those molecules on, mm -hmm. and what other drugs we can combine them with to make durable, lasting impacts on cancer patients. So really, our, our company is an AI company developing cancer medicines. Mm. And these are all oncology-based and clinical stage. You have three currently in the pipeline. Tell me, that's an exciting development. Yeah, we have a, I mean, our broader pipeline is uh, probably several more candidates, but three are in, in clinical trials today where we're dosing patients on a weekly basis. Mm. And they're very... Uh, different cancers. So one of the unique things about the AI platform is we try to look for cancers where there's a huge unmet need. Where is there no drug approved? Where is the condition so significant that existing drugs aren't working very well? Because it allows companies like ours, new companies, mm -hmm. to go after those targeted indications. Focus. Sure. It's precision oncology, right? Can you give us an example? Yeah, I'll give you a, yeah. So one drug that is in phase two currently in a trial in the US, Japan, and Taiwan is for people who get lung cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, but they don't smoke. Mm. So non-smoking lung cancer is molecularly a totally different disease. Sure. And that's why a lot of the existing drugs don't work well. Oftentimes they'll do certain types of precision drugs and then they fail. And so that's where our drug comes in. Okay. Another great one that we're in phase uh, one trial, where we just finished a large scale phase one trial is for cancers that have DNA damage repair deficiency. And so when cancer grows, its DNA actually becomes vulnerable. And so our drug attacks the DNA of the cancer cell okay. through a mechanism called synthetic lethality. And the unique thing about this drug is that actually it's activated inside the cancer cell. Ah. So we've designed it so that it activates when a certain enzyme is overexpressed in the cancer cell. Okay. And so that's the beauty of doing medicine in the AI era is that you can think about and model and tweak molecules, understand how they can work or maybe not work, and you can save thousands and thousands of hours of laboratory work and probably years of actually failed clinical trials going after the right indication and the right cancer in the first time. And specifically using AI to do that. Tell me more about the AI component and how these are getting yeah. enhanced more quickly. So when we, when we first started, the AI platform continues to grow and evolve. That's the great thing about it. You know, we're not just using it once and we're done. Like the AI platform every single week, every single day is continuing to evolve. It now actually self-learns. It reads papers on its own. It has different algorithms compete to figure out which algorithm is gonna be best for a very specific problem. And so when we first started with the AI, what we were trying to ask was a very simple question. What kind of cancers does this molecule work best in? And which ones does it not work best in? Because you want trials where the molecules gonna work best in it. Because we all hear about molecules in cancer that work really well early on, but then they fail. Right. Why? Right. Why don't we understand that early? Okay. Through modeling and data and technology. And so our first questions are really that question. Basic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then as the AI advanced, we got to thinking about, well, what if we can tweak a molecule based on certain features and do molecular feature optimization? What if we can take a molecule and predict its binding properties? What if we can take two molecules together and make them better than each other independently through combination trials? What if we can actually find new cancers that have no therapy at all, but our molecule works best in? Mm. So all these are really important, oftentimes multi-billion dollar questions, but the AI platform continues to allow us to do that. And we can predict patient response, we can develop new molecules, and most importantly, we can find new indications for these molecules. And you can do it in short term. Short term, quickly. right? Yeah, yeah. Months, not yeah, decades. Exactly. When we first started doing some of these things, these problems would take weekends or weeks. But now with large scale cloud based computing, I mean, it can take hours. It's unreal. That's it's it's so unreal. exciting. No. Oh, my goodness. Uh, tell me the nuts and bolts of your company, the locations, the culture, the people, yeah. the needs that you have. Yeah, it's a very it's a very unique company. We're headquartered in Dallas, Texas. Uh, we have an operation in Dallas and in Atlanta. We're about 24 people. It's very small. About a third of our team is focused on the clinical trials, clinical operations, and their clinical scientists. About a third of our team is focused on AI, their computational biologists, data scientists, software engineers. And the third of our team was focused on supporting it through okay. finance and uh, through 
uh, scientific development and clinical affairs. So it's, you know, kind of three, three buckets of, of talent, but it's very, it's a unique culture. I mean, very hard driving and a big range of ages too. We have people in their twenties to people in their seventies. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, but they all have one thing in common. We really believe that we can change the face of drug development and cancer by the use of data. And we're passionate about that. We're not doing it just to do AI. We're doing it because we think the AI will change the face of how tra drugs are made and developed and advanced. And we think we can compress the timeline. We think we can compress the cost. And very importantly, we can increase the number of molecules that are available. Like when you go to uh, Whole Foods, for example. Right. Imagine instead of like the 300 waters that are available in Whole Foods, what if there are only four or five? Well, we have more waters available today at a grocery store than we do cancer medicines. Oh my, right. right. And so that's shocking to think about. Right. So it takes a long time. Yeah. It takes a lot of money. But what if that time could be cut in half? Hey. What if the money can be cut by 70, 80, 90%? Mm. It's going to allow us to have many, many more molecules. Right. And so this kind of what I think of as the golden era of medicine is coming. Mm. And so the only way to make it happen is through data and AI. What are some of the milestones people should be on the lookout for with your company? Yeah, we've got two very important trials that we'll be sharing data. Uh, we'll have complete data from our LP184 trials, the 63 patient trial. We're very excited to announce data from that. And uh, we've got data that supports the mechanism of action, gives us a clear dosage, and gives us a signal where that'll work best. We have a milestone for our trial in never smokers. We'll be sharing data about that. And we also have the first kind of major launch of our AI platform commercially for drug developers around the world. Wonderful. Yeah. So what is the future of biotech and medicine, in your opinion? We hear that today, which is so exciting, but what can we look forward to down the road? I think in, in five years, you're going to have a massive compression of early stage development. I think in 10 years, you're going to see lots of very, very targeted medicines, not just in cancer, but in all kinds of indications, neurodegenerative disorders, cardiac disorders, rare genetic disorders, uh, congenital birth defects. And I think in about 25 years, you're going to have real customized medicines, not only customized based on, on your profile, but also based on the range of diseases that you may have. And so we're not only going to be able to actually predict how medicine should be created, but actually the process of creating the medicine, the manufacturing of the drugs is also going to be automated. That is a whole nother world that hasn't been done yet. So imagine- Designer treatments, designer drugs. And, and automated, automated drug manufacturing. Because, you know, even if you come up with a great molecule, it still takes months and months and years sometimes to actually make the drug. Right, and get it to the masses, of course. And now imagine through automation, AI, robotics, we're not gonna need teams of 800 chemists and engineers. You gonna be able to streamline it. So I think uh, I'm pretty excited about the future of medicine. I think Absolutely. data and AI and robotics is gonna fundamentally change uh, the face of how humans really conquer disease. Wonderful. Well, it's an exciting time. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Thanks. The EO Hana Sharma with Lantern Pharmaceuticals. A pleasure to Thanks. meet you and wish you nothing but the best. Thanks. Thank you.